Yo, what is going on my friends back today today we're talking about one of the coolest things you can do with the octane render engine within cinema 4d in my opinion and that is creating these beautiful lit scenes now this one is more of a minimal one we have a pretty cool texture going on here but what i want to do is really show you the tricks between bending the light changing around the settings to get the actual desired outcome that you're going after now this is directed more towards beginners if you're more advanced people you probably know all about this but you could still pick something up and like i said my content was mostly premiere and after effects but now we're stepping into more 3d things i recommend you guys check out links down below i have a link to where you guys can check out the octane render engine which is going to give you this live viewer as, as well as a bunch of awesome tools that we're going to be using for this tutorial as well as look into getting cinema 4d or any kind of 3d software so as always if you guys are new here consider subscribing join the community leave a like if you do enjoy this tutorial comment what you want to see down below a little side note before we finally start this tutorial i'm going to have this project file as well as some of these cool fleshy textures available for download down in the description i'm probably going to put it up for like five dollars or something nice cool pack of awesome specular textures like the one that i have on this guy right here so let's go ahead and start a new project i'm going to go over to file new now for our actual model we're going to be using this free model from this really awesome website link down below this is from tfm style in the freebie section there's a bunch of really cool things the one in particular this right here the tfm style asset pack free high quality models that you guys can explore with some really cool stuff included within here interiors exteriors some more creative things as well as a bunch of poses now this is one of the poses that i was talking about so go ahead and download it like i said 100 for free it's going to come in this asset pack open up the asset pack go over to poses and then go ahead and choose the one that you would like the one i chose was the one of him sitting on the square i'm pretty sure it was this one so all you need to do is just click file open and then just open this up or what you can do is come into cinema 4d click file merge objects and then go and navigate to that folder open up the file not the actual picture preview so i'm going to go ahead and do that merge objects let's go ahead and navigate to my 3d folder and then find that asset pack right there and then let's go to poses um, and then let's use it with this one just to give you guys a little bit of variety of what we're doing. So we'll click OK. It's going to open up here. We can zoom in. Also, a thing I like to do in the beginning is I like to go to my render settings right here. And I like to change this off the bat because sometimes if you're setting things up and you're basing it off your viewer, at the end, if you change your resolution, it could kind of mess things up. So whether you're doing it for Instagram 1080 by 1080 or you just want standard HD 1920 by 1080, I'm just going to do it Instagram size and make it 1080 by 1080. Like I said, 1920 by 1080, 1080 by 1080. Those usually work a lot well. And now you can see box gives us a nice view of what is actually going to be rendered. Okay, so here it is loaded up within our Octane Render Viewer. Now let's quickly just set up this scene a little bit before we start setting up those neon lights. So go ahead and follow along with me. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to Objects, I'm gonna to go to HDRI Environment, and that's just gonna turn this background white. Let's go over to our Object Viewer menu and let's click on the Octane Sky, click on this little tag here, and then let's go and click on Main, and we're going to change this power from one to zero. And that's going to change completely black, but that's fine for now. Let's also go over to medium and let's just click add fog. And let's go and click on scattering medium and let's change that density to something like 0.2. All right, now let's go ahead and add some lighting so that we can see our scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on objects again. I'm gonna go to lights and then octane area light. So it pops up in our viewer right there. And then we can go ahead and use these tools in the top left just to rotate this light. Make sure you select it in your object viewer menu. And then go ahead and just position that using your axes. So that's looking good so far. Let's go ahead and control C, control V to duplicate that. And let's go ahead and make another one. I'm gonna rotate this all the way around. And I'm actually gonna rotate this up and then kind of move it down a little bit. And of course, if this is a little bit too overwhelming, what you can do is just click your mouse wheel and you can always just reposition however this is looking. I think for now, this is looking good. Also, what you're gonna wanna do, click on these settings right here, change that off of direct lighting, and I recommend using path tracing or PMC. So let's go with path tracing for now and you'll see the lighting is gonna get a little bit more intense. But let's change these samples. Let's maybe bump that down to like 2000 samples. 
GI clamp. I like putting this on either something like 24 to one. So anywhere from one to 24. Caustic blur, I put that all the way up to one. And then other than that, I usually keep it the same. If you want, you can turn on adaptive sampling for now while you're working on this. But while you once you're ready to do the final rendering, what I would do is turn adaptive sampling off so that there isn't any noise that you don't want. So that's good for now. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. Now what we wanna do, and this is probably one of the most important parts, is you wanna add your Octane camera. Now, whenever I was first starting out, I would watch some of the tutorials on how to create these cool neon lights, and it wouldn't really talk about the camera, but the Octane camera is probably the most important part to really being able to change around your light. So let's go over to Objects, Let's click Octane Camera, and then it's gonna be right here. Now let's just talk about some of the basics of the Octane Camera. So, what you wanna do is you're gonna see this little target here. Once you click that, this Octane Camera is gonna be locked into place. Now, to actually look around this scene without messing up your camera, click off this little check and then now we can move around freely and you're going to see our camera stays in place. We can maybe change around the lighting, change around a bunch of different things. And if you want to snap back to that camera position, you just need to click this little white plus target mark right there. So with this checked on with this white little thing highlighted, let's click on this little tag that's on our camera. And then we're going to go ahead and start checking a few things on. Let's go ahead and turn on camera imager like that. And then let's go ahead and turn on post-processing. So check that as well. Now this post-processing section is really the area where you're gonna be able to change around a lot of the cool creative light settings. For example, bloom power is going to be able to change around your light as you see, it's as well as your glare. And nothing really significant is happening because we haven't added those neon lights that I was talking about. We just have these basic lights around the um, background. So one thing I also notice is there's some kind of weird patterns on our model, as you see. Let's go over to where it says Genesis 8 female, these two parts, and you're gonna see these little normal tags. Let's go ahead and just delete that off of there. We don't need any of that. So just delete all those normal tags and that should go back to normal. Coming back to our camera, just wanna cover some more of the basics before we move on. Go back to our tag and then click on our camera imager. Um, you can change around your exposure here as well as you can change around your gamma, so keep that in mind. Now, one thing that I do wanna mention is anything that you change in the imager, if you click off of here, you're not gonna see any of that happening. So for some reason, if your lighting isn't the way that you thought it was or you just can't get it to work, click, make sure this is clicked and make sure that your settings are the same. The more cool little things in here, what you can do is you can choose any of these pre set responses. Um, I like using one of the Futura ones up here, like Futura 100 CD. It gives kind of a nice little sci-fi um, look, but you guys can choose any one that you will like. I'll keep it on Futura 2 100 CD, as well as I'm just going to drop the gamma a little bit just so I can get some more shadows going on there. All right, so that's looking a lot better. Turn my camera off real quick just so you guys can see these settings. As you see, custom LUT, you can load in any cool custom LUT that you guys would like. Let's bring that back. Now let's go ahead and add in the neon light that this video is titled after. So we're gonna go ahead and add it to the sphere just like we did in that beginning example. So first steps first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a little octane material. So let's go down here to our, to our material bin, click create and then go to shader and then we're going to go to C4D Octane, and then we're going to go to Octane Material. And we'll talk a little bit about some of these other things like Mix Material. Okay, so now let's go ahead and double click on that material that we just made, and we're going to go ahead and keep it on Diffuse. Let's keep it on Diffuse for now, and we're going to go down to the Emission section. Now, this is the most important section. This is the section that's going to be able to give you that cool neon light effect. Let's go ahead and click Black Body Emission. And then let's click on our options for a black body emission and we can just bump up the power and we're going to go ahead and just drag this onto our object here. So now we can really see what's happening and then we can go in and change the settings as we see fit. So now let's click on our black body emission and just using our live viewer. Let's go ahead and just change this around. It doesn't have to be too crazy, maybe something like 80 because also make sure you check surface brightness, also double-sided. And now let's go ahead and just kind of pimp this light out by going over back to our camera options. So creating that material with the black body emission is the first step. Like I said, if you don't have this Octane camera, it's gonna look a lot different. So I switched off my camera view and let me zoom in here. And if every time you're making your lights, it just kind of looks like this because our camera options are what's going to add more into this. So let's go back to our camera, make sure that check's enabled. Let's go to our post-processing and then let's just bump up our bloom and you're going to see as I bump up my bloom, 
our light is just going to become more and more vibrant to the point where it's really cool light and neon you can also add a little glare if you do want to so something like that guys and then let's go back to our octane material and let's go to our mission and our black body emission you guys can go ahead and change the te temperature if you do want going back to our octane camera settings mess around with your bloom power and like i said if for some reason this isn't working just make sure that this is checked on and you're messing with that because with this checked off it's not really going to look impressive it's just going to kind of be an orb that's not really radiating light you have to have that octane camera in there to get that nice glowing color let me show you another cool little example let's go ahead and just make a simple little cylinder and then let's go ahead and just position this cylinder maybe scale it down so i'll click the scale tool to make this a bit smaller and i'm actually going to just scale down the axis because i want this to be like a long cylinder so drag out these little yellow circles here and then i'm going to go ahead and position this where i'd like so something like this kind of just a um, pole kind of just a pole going up let's go ahead and click Control c Control v on that cylinder and then just use our axis to move that use our rotation tool just to position that how we would like giving like some equal space between our subject and let's go ahead and do the same thing let's add a nice black body emission maybe let's kind of make this one white so i'll do the same thing so you guys can watch in case i went too fast so what we're going to do is we're going to go to create we're going to go to shader c4d octane octane material open that up and just have it as a good old just normal diffuse material come down to your emission section black body emission and then go ahead and change around your settings so we can go and drop that now onto our pole because we have our camera post-processing settings already um, changed around that's looking good let's actually make this on 80 just so it's not too um overwhelming same thing onto this one and you guys can get really creative with this i see some really awesome artists creating some really beautiful kind of like cyberpunk futuristic modern things using this awesome neon lighting think that these cylinders are still a little bit too bright so i'm gonna put them on 50 just because our bloom is really high right now now what i'm gonna do is i'm actually going to duplicate this again so Control c Control v and i'm going to rotate this and let's kind of go for like a cool little um cross so we'll get it like that and we're gonna be good and not make that a backwards cross let's make that normal cross Control c Control v using these axes to transform it and then finally rotate it and like i said guys in my opinion you can create some of the coolest looking stuff with this lighting in itself just the way that it bounces off everything the octane render engine just does a beautiful job at that and now let's go ahead and just add a cool little skin texture onto here and on that website i showed you before the one by tfm style they actually have a genesis skin controller which is really interesting because you can create some really hd high detailed skin as you see right here just using the skin controller or watching that tutorial so if you want to create some really lifelike characters and add it onto those poses definitely an option another cool option is you can go ahead down in the description and download this little specular flesh texture i've been kind of building a lot of them and i'm going to put them into a little mini pack as well as give you guys the um, project downloads for for this and the last one i did so i'm going to hold down b and let's just go over to my other project and let's just copy some of these little textures that we got going here we even have a mixed texture we even have a mixed texture Control c let's hold down v and go back to our project we're working on and then let's just paste them in there so here is just a little quick preview three little skin fleshy textures i'm also going to be creating some more once i post this tutorial fire octane back up and let's go ahead and just drop the human fleshy skin onto our subject just so you guys can get a good idea of what this is going to look like now it's going to look a little creepy because there are some eyelashes on there let's go ahead and hide that from the render and this is going to take a super long time to render but i'm just going to throw a picture on the screen so you guys can check out what that looks like Let's go ahead and just delete that and you can just see how beautiful the reflectivity of this it's specular texture let's go ahead and delete that this is another awesome one that i used in the first example this one is more glass like and we even have a little octane mix texture where you can add in that fleshy texture and a black light emission just to bring it into one combined kind of like toned down but still fleshy neon light a bunch of awesome stuff that's going to be included in there like i said guys if you are new consider subscribing leave a like if you did enjoy it. facebook group link down below thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys later